Hey, uh, this is Maria, uh, your Tuesday person coming from my living room and kitchen. You're watching It's the Fun. So, um, this is kind of a piggyback, but not really, on um, what David was talking about the day before. Uh, in the sense that it does have to do with the Colorado shooting, however, I'm not really going to get into the psychology of the people um, that were involved in the various shootings that happened. Um, this is more going to be about the uh, social uprise, I guess would be a good word, um, that has come about, um, that I've noticed usually comes about um, with, I mean, uh, it would make sense that it would after every uh, great shooting that would be the issue of gun control which uh, I have I don't want to say I have mixed feelings about it because I really don't um, but at the same time I can definitely understand both sides of the story um, so for those of you who do not uh, know although I'm fairly certain that everybody knows about gun control um, the whole issue of gun control is that in our Bill of Rights, the first ten amendments that uh, founding fathers made, along with the Constitution, um, one of the amendments said that we the people have the right to bear arms. Um, and the whole point of uh, the Bill of Rights is that these are fundamental, ten fundamental rights um, that are part of the Constitution, but at the same time are kind of their own entity in the sense that the Constitution itself can be rewritten. Um, because obviously times change, people realize things, people have realized that there's absolutely no problem in a white man marrying a uh, black woman. There is absolutely no problem with women being able to vote. Um, there is no problem in the American citizens being able to drink alcohol. But the whole thing is that the first ten amendments are written so they cannot be taken away. Now, none of the amendments have been taken away. Um, none of the Bill of Rights have been changed. However, there have been obvious modifications to it. Um, with some kind of being really, really complicated in the sense that if we take the first, um, the first amendment giving us the freedom of speech, uh, the freedom of press, the freedom of assembly, which is uh, peaceful assembly, which is protesting, and um, freedom of religion. All of these have been modified, still giving us the opportunity to actually express those rights. However, they've kind of been changed a little bit. Um, with freedom of speech, we are free to say whatever we want unless it comes into the jurisdiction of either domestic or foreign terrorism, or if it becomes a case of national security. And although, although it's kind of twisted to think that we have the right. We have the right to say whatever we want, whenever we want to say it, to whoever we want to say it, as long as we're in America and we have this right to do so. There are certain times when it just doesn't. You can't do it. So the whole issue of gun control is this: we do have the right to bear arms, and that amendment has also been modified um, because it came from anybody can own a gun. To so you may only own a gun if you are registered for it. If you are able to pass. A screening to make sure that you're not a convict, you're not a criminal, you're not going to be using this for negative purposes, you're not going to be buying this gun to um, hold a bank up and perform armed robbery. But at the same time, you are able to own a personal gun as long as it is registered to you and you, you, you can provide proper documentation for this weapon. And the whole issue of gun control is that they want to... It's mixed, because I feel like some people want to completely eliminate guns, completely, and not allow anybody to own a gun, and destroy all the guns. And then some people are like, oh, well, you're able to own a, a hunting rifle if you're a hunter. You're able to own a small revolver, a small pistol. But once it goes into military weapons, once it goes into AK-47s and machine guns and flamethrowers, I don't know if anybody does own a flamethrower, but let's say, off chance, somebody fucking owns a flamethrower. Sometimes I wish I did have a flamethrower. If you go outside after a certain point, there are roaches everywhere. I'd love to flamethrower them. And the thing is that, in my opinion, although yes, I do believe that 
There are certain guns that civilians have absolutely no right to own. Certain military weapons, certain military mechanized guns, civilians have absolutely no purpose to own. I don't even know why somebody, even if it's like for show, I don't know if anybody buys guns for show, but even like having it in a locked safe. However, there's that point where people are like, guns need to be completely destroyed. We need to have gun control. We need to eliminate the amount of guns that people have. And the thing is that um, what people don't understand is that guns don't cause violence. And although it seems like anybody who owns a gun is prone to violence, and anybody who is able to get their hands on a gun registered or unregistered, they will be using it with an intent purpose of injuring somebody else. That's not necessarily true. If somebody were to destroy all the guns, some people are just, that's not going to change people. Violent people are still going to be able to find a way to hurt somebody else. And I've watched enough Law and Order SVU to know this. I, I, I know that people don't need, don't need a gun to fucking kill somebody. They can take a fucking pipe and like bang them in the head a couple times. And the point that I'm trying to make um, is that I don't think that we are able, we will be able to control these violent outbreaks. We won't be able to prevent those things if we get rid of guns. Because all we're going to do is we're going to alter the way that violence is going to be taken. And this may sound extremely fucked up, but in all honesty, like, and as tragic as this is, I'd much rather have people make, performing these mass acts of violence with guns. Because if, can you imagine what would happen if people performed these mass acts of violence with whatever they could find on the street? And I'm not saying that this is okay. By, by all means, this is not alright. People should not be doing this. We need to take actions to prevent people from doing this. But eliminating guns is not going to do anything. Because there is a time and there is a place to shoot your personal gun. And it's not appropriate when somebody is not necessarily mentally challenged, but more like un misunderstood. The whole point with the Columbine kids was that they were, they were aggressively bullied every single day. And to be quite honest, I have been in their position. I, when I went to a public school, I would be walking down the hallway, minding my own business, headphones in, not listening to what anybody would say, and people would rip them off and call me a whore. They would call me a slut. They would, give, they would send me death threats via anonymous me via internet or up close and personal. I've been shoved into lockers and I was a 14 year old kid who had a very small group of friends and I was extremely friendly and I was tried to be as outgoing as possible and I tried to make it in with popular because I tried to make a lot of friends but for some reason there was something about me, something about my appearance something about the way that I acted that people did not accept. But the thing is, as much, as much as I wanted to pay back the people who did this to me, as much as I wanted to cause the people who made fun of me on a daily basis as much agony and mental distress as they gave me, I didn't act upon it. I went to a different school. I transferred to a private school. I stayed there for four years. I graduated um, with a really, really high GPA. I want, I'm going to a phenomenal art school, one of the best in the nation, if not the best in the nation. I have a steady job. I'm living in my own apartment right now. Um, I just paid my own internet bill yesterday. <laughs> but the thing is that I did not have the kind of visceral reaction that those other people had. I don't know what was going on through the mind of the Colorado shooter. I don't know what was wrong with him, but the thing is that just by eliminating all the guns, that's not going to change anything. He still would have acted out in some way. We don't need to get rid of the guns. We need to teach people that violence is not the answer. And although there is a small percentage that actually takes from like video games and violent movies, 
I'm not going to put blame on that. Because for the most people, majority of the people understand that when they're watching a really, really violent movie, or if they're playing a really, really violent war video game, pardon me, that that's not real life, that they do not have, that the virtual world is completely separate from the physical world. And you can't, these two cannot be combined at all. They're not the same thing. And so this is what people need to realize. The way to go is that in schools at a young age, I mean, I was lucky enough in my public school um, to have a short lesson taught. The, the, the grade was split up into two groups. And I forget if I was 13 or 14 at the time, but we were taught about rape. The girls and the boys in the same room were taught about rape. We were told that if a girl gets drunk, if a girl does a strip tease, and the guy takes advantage of her and has sex with her, that that is still considered rape. Getting drunk and stripping does not equal consent. And this is what we were taught. And maybe young kids, even younger than 13, 14, maybe we should start from 9 or 10. We need to teach people about guns. We need to teach people that guns are not the way to solve our problems. We need to be educated that there are instances if somebody is robbing your house and you're scared and you're afraid that they're going to hurt you, that you have the right to injure them, to, to hinder their movements so you have enough time to call the police and get them out of your house. If we get rid of guns and somebody breaks into my house, and tries to kill me, what am I supposed to do? I'm a fairly short girl. I'm under five foot and my arms are pretty short. So if I take a bottle and try to hit him over the head and it's a six foot guy, how the fuck am I supposed to do that? Guns don't kill people. And as cliche as it sounds, guns do not kill people. Guns are just pieces of metal and plastic and wood that hold another piece of metal in them. They are dead, they're inanimate, they don't do anything. Guns do not go off by themselves. You put it on the table and it sits there and unless something happens to it, it will not shoot. It is whoever picks up that gun, it is whoever makes the conscious decision that yes, today I'm going to go into a movie theater and I'm going to shoot up all these innocent civilians. It's either I have beef with the world, I have beef with one of them there, I don't, I'm bored out of my mind, I have nothing better to do, my daddy touched me, I don't care. You do not have the right to do that. And this is what we need to teach kids. We need to teach our citizens about violence. We need to teach our youth about violence. Just the same way that I was taught as a 13, 14 year old kid, just going through puberty, that rape is wrong. That there's such a thing that men will take advantage of you and try to have sex with you even if you say no. So, um, I'm Maria. Sorry about the long-winded rant, but uh, I'm your Tuesday person. Have a great week!